YouTubers Brian Proctor back with another video and this is going to be part three to my keys to drawing backgrounds in comics and this one is going to be dealing with outside now this is going to be a long video I'm warning you it's like maybe 50 minutes yes 50 minutes but there is a lot of information and this is just some of the things that I, that I did and I finished the video and I came back to redo the beginning to one let you know this was a long video and let you see some of the things that I did. Now, at the end of the video, I drew these three backgrounds to show you basically putting it all together. But the problem is my camera stopped on this one and this background. So you couldn't see me really drawing it. You can see me drawing these, but these were examples of everything that I was teaching you with all of this material here. So just letting you know, there is a lot of good information that I shared with you guys in doing this. So it's definitely worth it. If you're trying to do background, trying to improve your background, then stay with the video. I know a lot of people will want to skip through it. But as I said, there is some important information that you will want to use, to have and to use. So, um, yeah, that's why I redid this, just to let you guys know in the beginning what you're in for so and this is the last of the series in background drawing so take it in use it give me some better backgrounds let me see what you guys are doing all right so let's get on with the video anyway in my videos I say um, everything in life is square circle and a triangle mainly squares and if you stop right now and uh, Look around your room or wherever you are. You'll see more squares than you will see circles and triangles. A circle will usually turn into a cylinder and a square into a box or a rectangle. But you will see squares. And um, the reason for that is it's a flat surface. And usually uh, everything is basically built on flat surfaces. We build a house on a flat surface. We sit on a flat surface. We lay on a flat surface. And even if we build a house on a hill we make sure we flatten that out before we build that house so uh um what am i saying windows are going to be square or rectangle doors are going to be square or rectangle tables are going to be square or rectangle and that's because one when we build in a square house it fits it saves space in our house so we don't have any wasted space can you imagine having a square house and looking down on it and having a, a round bed, a round table, a round dresser, a round this or around that. And you look at all this dead space that you have in a house. So what we do is we make stuff square or rectangle to fit in our world so that we don't use all that dead space up. That's why you always put your bed against your wall or your, your dresser usually against your wall so that you have this open room and you won't have all that dead space in your house so that's one thing that you do when we draw the one reason why when wrong perspective we use a lot of squares because it's flat number one and then that's just the way life is really so in this video i'm going to do more of an outside um background drawing because the other one we I dealt with rooms inside mostly so we're gonna do an outside one basically so let's get this thing started okay so the first thing you want to do in any drawing let's just say this is your panel this is your panel you want to draw and the first thing you want to do is find out where your camera is going to be sitting now a lot of people might find that hard to understand but just think of taking a selfie and I think anybody who has a camera phone is taking a selfie so you're here where are you going to put the camera you're going to hold the camera up here you're going to hold the camera down here you're going to put the camera down there and that's the same thing so you want to get the best shot and that's the same thing with um drawing or yeah drawing your 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 background in your panel where do you want to put your camera and excuse me because i keep twisting my paper because i don't draw straight like this and i don't write like this i have to twist mine to turn in a draw so in the other video i showed you about doing the v the v the triangle like so 
So wherever the point is represents where your camera is going to be sitting because that's how you see. So if you do the other triangle more like this, it's going to be lower. Your camera is going to be lower and all the way to just basically a flat triangle. So here's your line and your camera is going to be like that. So, and this video was prompted because I'm going to do a, one of my action pose positions of people sitting. And I thought about it and I said it would, it would translate better into the video for this. And because I'm stuttering, because my mind has got so much stuff running through it, trying to come out, you just have to forgive me for this. So let's just say like you're going to do a chair. You're going to put somebody in a chair and this is going to be in the video. What angle of the chair or how how will you have the chair looking so let's just say this is a box and it's the easy way to draw a chair and then you put a thing on top now the camera is going to be somewhere here or you can do and i'm just going to do a box it could be like this the person could be sitting and i'll just draw the person make it a little easier Well, the person could be sitting like this. Or the person could be sitting. Um, there's another way. There's another way. If you turn the chair like that. So it all depends on the angle that you turn your camera, basically, to find what type of shot you want in your background. Now, there's going to be two major key factors when drawing background outside. One is going to be, as I said, your camera angle, and two is going to be your grid. So what I mean by grid is, let's just say, this is your point, this is your vanishing point. And then you do your triangle. Well, let's open that up even more. Or oh, that will become the starburst, as I said in another video, which you probably didn't see. So let me explain that starburst. Well, what I mean by starburst, your vanishing point right here. Let's say this is your road and everything vanishes right there. This becomes your eye line right there. That's your horizon or your eye line. If, that was, if this was um, land, It'd be mountains or something in the background. That's as far as you could go. Now, what I mean by a starburst is when you have this point, you just have lines radiating out of it, just like an explosion or something or energy coming from it. And these lines will create your grid, whether it be up in the air or above it or below it. So you'd have to be able to measure out lines which will become your grid now i'll do this one on this one and i'll show you how to measure it later in a, in a minute but i'm just going to rough hand it right right now for right now and i did a checkerboard which i'll show you later in the uh later on in the video i did a checkerboard out of the back of a sketch pad a little thick piece of paper the little thick cardboard they give you in the very back of the sketch pad and this is a perfect grid so that when you start putting things on it, it will line up. It won't be uh, this is here and this other thing, which should be way back here, looks like it's in front of the person. So by using each square, and let me just chop this one off just because I can. By using a square, let's put someone here, you can put things in perspective. And let's put somebody here. Now, if you're doing outside, let's say you want uh, somebody's in the forest, you can put a tree here, a tree here, a tree way back here, a tree over here. And it becomes easy because you're just placing it on a grid so if you have to change your angle of this at any point let's do this let's just say let's say this is your shot this is your first shot this could be your establishing shot 
these guys are in the forest and I'm just doing another tree here and they're fighting they're gonna be fighting and this guy is by a tree so if you change that let's see look at this one two three four if you change that angle where you're doing a close-up on this guy let's just say uh, let's just say okay let's just draw the guy first make sure you guys can see that and this is a quick way to draw people and I'm going to do another video on drawing people different ways people can draw and in your grid you have right here so you have the one two three four you know it's a tree right here so whenever you have to draw your background over and over from different positions you'll know that oh there's a tree here there's a tree uh one two three four up and there should be another tree right here a big tree here and this guy was so like five or six over and he was one line over going back to this let's just say he's in this line is this one so like three lines over so let's say one two three lines over and he was how many above so on this line here you would just see his head and maybe his shoulders because you have it down on your grid and this is a good way to keep track of things when you're on the outside same thing on the inside you can use it but you use your grid more on the outside especially when you're doing far off shots and now let's say we turn this guy to the side we're going to do a side side shot of this guy right here so And let's chop it off at the waist here let's say this is our panel so we know that one two three four over this grid let's say the ground is going to be right let's just say this ground is right here so you say like four and then all of us will be measured as well so like four over there's the tree here that way, whenever you have to change angles and scenes, you will know, and it may be a tree, another tree way back here because of your grid. You'll know where people, where things are placed. And then people that look at your book or read your book won't say, um, oh, that's wrong because he was standing next to a tree, especially if he doesn't move. If this is like a conversation thing and they're just talking and they haven't moved, People, some people will pick up on that because I think one, remember a conversation I had with uh, some other comic book artists years ago, years ago, and they were saying that in one of the panels, the door, they had a door and the door swung open in the panel, but then when they reversed it, the door wasn't reversed as well. So it's like they missed, they missed, um, missed reversing the door in the panel. So, and there are some people that will catch on to little mistakes like that. And, you know, you don't want people to, even though it's such a small mistake, you don't want people to just blow that out of proportion saying, oh, this guy can't draw because he didn't have this right in his panel. And, you know, little things like that could actually blow up on the internet and you don't want that for your book. So having a grid is always a good thing. And you'd be more trees in the background here. Way back here somewhere. And from this, it would either stop here, but this would look like this one would have it to look like there's a hill because you don't see the bottom of those trees. So this would actually, well, you can cut it off anywhere, but if you kept going, it would end up way back here. But because of the angle of this, and one thing you can do is if you're used to drawing a person, you can use their shoulders. Make sure I'm not drawing another other paper their shoulders as a point of uh, reference that way you can do your your ground and then you do your starburst again and then you just measure your 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 grid lines like that and that's off because I don't know why it's off at this particular moment then you can have your trees or your buildings or whatever 
is there in the background. And once you get so small down here, you won't be able to see. So you can just kind of guesstimate, you know, where your trees are. But always use your shoulders. And this is another reason why we use squares a lot in perspective. Because it's easy to line up with your vanishing point. As I said, forgive me for if I stutter or if I stop a little bit because my mind is my mind is on the next sentence. And I'm trying to finish the other sentence with my mouth. And this guy had a gun, so yeah. So yeah, anytime you do that, just go by the shoulders. That's why I draw the, this part first, and I always tell people, draw your torso first. That way, you can gauge where your vanishing point is going to be by that person standing. The head is last. The head could be turned or twisted in any direction, but it's the shoulders that make, that are more important. And I did a video on doing the torso, and as you see, you just use those same steps and your torso, your top half of your body should come out correctly every time. All right, let's just say that everything was not flat. Let's just draw a surface and see, figure out how I can do that. So we have this again, your vanishing point. And your vanishing point could be here, here, wherever you can have lines coming this way. It doesn't really make a difference. It depends on your, your drawing. But let's just do this. Hopefully it'll come out. You'll understand what I'm saying. Now, instead of doing, well, let's just do it. You have a flat surface here. Now, by using your grid lines, you can easily um, go like up. And then you can tell that there's not a, it's not a flat surface in certain areas just as you can go down. You would just have to bring some of them close together. And that and you could have a guy standing in the hole with his leg up out of the hole. But your grid surface does play 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 a lot of a lot of um what am i saying pause okay unpause well anyway it it it, it means a lot in your drawings i don't know why I, i'm dying here but same thing here you could go back and go up and come down if you want to put a, a hill or something just use your grid lines i know this is not coming out perfect but in my mind, it's coming out right, but use your grid lines the same way if you did a rock or something, you put a, a rock or something in there and you you want it to look round. So basically, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So let's just say there's a drop off here, like a cliff. And jagged edge of a cliff. Now, of course, you're not going to keep your grid lines. That's just for you to be able to know how you're going to do your surface. But it just helps you to keep track of what you're doing. So like if you're going back here and you started to go up, do another one here, up here, flatten that off. And I don't know, come back down. I, I don't know. But all that will change because your perspective, your lines are changing. Your perspective lines change as well. But to keep track of stuff, unless you're doing a real close up of this guy and you do a far shot, you need those grid lines to add other things. Like if you were putting other soldiers here and then as I said your your shoulder if his shoulders were going back let me switch colors the way I was drawn if his shoulders were going back this way like to this point back here 
Um, the same thing with his, his foot, like that. This would be his, where his, his belt would be. So any lines in between, you would follow that. And if you had more guys behind him, they would be on the same plane. Let's say his shoulders. And down the belt, the feet, and the head. And they would all look, or they would all be the same size by keeping them on the same line. And you could do the same thing in the front. Well, since it's turned that way, you won't really want to, but you can to keep people on the same line. Just make sure it's on the vanishing point, the center, and then put these guys here, shoulder. Let's say I make a small guy, shoulder. His feet are gonna be right there. And his head. And you can basically keep everybody in proportion. You, well, I'm not gonna say you can't have the shoulder tilted down because you could be doing anything. You could be bent up, you could be falling over dying. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. Mama, why? So yeah, just forget the other thing I just said. All right, so now a lot of us tend to draw cities. Let's move this out the way. In our comics. And again, back to the triangles. And this just gives you the angle that you're, you're working on. The angle of your camera that you're working on. And then with the gray lines, you can place your buildings in each square. And it makes it a lot easier when you have these building here you can use them and remember this is the point that it's going to go back to so i'll draw the box first and then in red and go back here city so it's good to have color pens another building here following that you're going to go up and it's going to go back toward this point here. So it's going to stop right there. And you don't want to have stuff too close to your, your point because it, it throws it off. And let's just say another tall building here. And you don't necessarily have to use the each corner of the square, but it just helps out. Building here. Just make your rectangle. Going back to that point again, and going to that point again. Drop it here. Let's say you want to make a, another uh, level up here on this building. Going back to that same point again. Coming down, maybe have a, a what do you call those, one of those towers on top with the satellite and a couple other things with whatever picking up radar and when you do a city you just have to remember in between cities there are roads there are streets and it could be a four-lane highway there's a, there'll be a street here and good thing is as i say reference let me do this in blue it's like a road here and it could turn in front of this building connect with that one this could be the highway here here's your other built road and it's good to plan all this out before you start just throwing buildings wherever because what's in front of the building, other than you just don't want to put a door in front of a building. It could be if it's a um, like a department store or um, what do you call those office buildings. It could be like a small cafe outside with the awning where people can sit down and eat. And which means the doors will be tiny, tiny, tiny. There's always a sidewalk in front of a building and if it's a city there's going to be people walking around on the sidewalk so you'd have to think about that how big are the windows how big would the cars be and the cars would be the same way going back to the perspective point cars trucks so forth so as i said it's good to get reference 
material before you just start throwing some little something out because most people start out with the characters we'll start out with you know two characters fighting somehow And then we just throw some kind of wall or something in the back. If not even a wall, just just throw some kind of something in the background. And so instead of just throwing any little thing, here's a pencil, you know, here's my floor, here's uh, whatever, just a line or something to show and some panels breaking it down do a little better do a little better so let's say this you got shoulders here this guy shoulders up let's just say actually they would be flat because he could be twisting his body and he could be twisting his body so you would have your background let's say pull your pull your wall back stop putting them right there on the wall pull your wall back a little bit let's do this on red let's say my ground they're in a room of course they're in a room my wall is going to be right here so that gives me some some leeway to make my my grid okay so think about are they in a laboratory are they in a, a, a something or something so if that's the case i can pull back a little bit more maybe make it here So here's my grid. So with that, I can probably do something like, well, give me a green, uh, maybe a table or something here. Uh, so, okay, let's put, I'm running out of colors. Red, green, and blue, or oh, black. So here's my rear wall. Let's say this is my rear wall here. And these are some doors. And I could put more stuff in there since it's coming off that line. I could put like a big whatever here, a big cabinet or or specimen containment thing. And that's wrong right off the bat, Brian. Come on, do right. It's my side here, up, up, back. Since that's over it, I would not see the top of that. Yeah, do right, Brian, do right. Since that's above it, I won't see that. So it's going to be like this sorry i'm just it's just it's just me just me because this is going to be a two-point perspective so that other line is going to be right about here so this could be like a storage unit or something it's maybe it's got uh whatever chemical supplies whatever in it um maybe a some type of tank and this is going to be round so and it's got people floating in there is it doing an experiment? Um, something else here. And this is why you use squares. It's just easier to do squares and then you can round it off later. If you need to round this thing off, just, just add some roundness to it later. And then you have a better background for your people fighting. And so you can just say, I'll crop it like this. Like that and it just it makes it better and then it, you don't have to do so much detail because if these guys are talking some of it's going to get cropped off because your main detail is going to be right here with these guys fighting but by pulling your uh panel back your panel your point 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 okay here we go again okay let's try that again your vanishing point back further instead of having a wall right here at their feet nobody's gonna fight right there at the wall you come in, in the middle of the room pull that back do your grid line throw some squares in here just use your imagination to whatever could be in that room so yeah and this could be the same if they were outside if they were outside these could be plants so let me let me redraw this real quick let's just say let me do the pole panel 
Got these guys here. Again, we're fighting. And you notice how I put the head pretty much last. This would be his back. Anyway, since that's his back, I screwed that up, but don't worry about it. This is just a rough, rough sticks, stick man sketch. So again, put your vanishing point back. And that all depends on how much detail you want, because I can put it way back here, but I'm just going to put it like right here. So that's your vanishing point. Let's just do that in red again. This is my vanishing point. This is my horizon line, and I'll put my grid in here. Now, if they were outside, let's just put a tree here. And you would have the rest of your grid. Some, some bushes here. Maybe like a big old rock right here. And then, as I said, it doesn't have to be flat. You can do something like that. And it could be a drop off here. Uh, what else would you find outside? More grass, more rocks, and as I say, um, um, perspective, perspective, background, 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 reference, reference material, tree here. And usually I'll do this. I'll say I'm going to put a tree here, put a tree here, put a tree here. And that, that closes off a lot of the um, background or a lot of the open space. And then like that, put the foliage, this one's high, little foliage. And anytime they're out, you're outside, you go out in the woods, there's always plants and bushes growing around the base of trees. Like that, uh, some rocks here, some, some just whatever leaves, stubble. Let me give you guys some feet. So you can tell what part of the ground they're on. Back to green. Um, since you're back here, some little sky, they're outside. Should have made that blue. And then you have a better background. As long as you have that grid and you know what to place where. It's better. And then you know, you could you could have used this. You could have just zoomed in and say, okay, that's too much. I don't need to show the feet. I'll just use this part right here as my panel like that. Cover up the rest of that. So it just makes it a lot easier. Why is my pen bleeding? This is a new pen from China. All right, let me show you how to measure for your grid if you're going to draw a grid. Let's just say, first of all, let's have my horizon line, my eye level, and then here is my vanishing point. So um, let's just do this. I'm going to have one line. You remember the starburst and your second line here. Now, let's just say I put a line here or let's just put a line here straight up and down. These, these lines are going to be straight up and down. So you have your first line and let's say this is either a fence or a lamppost or it could be part of a wall so you have your first one and you want to guesstimate where your second one is going to be now you could say these are going to represent inches these are going to represent feet which usually in per room you do feet uh, it could represent miles whatever depends on uh, what you're doing so you put your second one there and say this this is the distance I want them to be so from here you want to take a center line through this and I'll show you how to measure a square, uh, center of a square in a second. And then you go from this line, this point, to this point, and you go down, join the line. Make sure it goes to that point, and then go straight down. And where this point hits, that's where your next pole goes. So you go straight up. So you're gonna go one back to this one, this point, this point, again that line if you have a ruler it's much better that's where your next one goes again gonna go back this point this point straight down 
to that as your next pole. There you go. Go back, straight down through the middle, your next pole. Go back, straight down through your middle, and your next pole, and so on and so forth. Now, if you do your grid like we said, I'll switch to red. Your starburst, as a, 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 as I say, like this. Now, even with these, you want to measure them, and you will really use your ruler to measure them. Say, if you want, this is this is your floor. This is your ground, your floor. From this point to this point, let's say you want um, you measure it in inches. Say one inch. So each one of these is going to be one inch, and this one inch can represent feet or inches or miles in your drawing so you'll be able to draw from here to here so you want to draw your first line you want to measure one inch two inch three inch four inch put a dot by that and then you draw your lines going to your vanishing point so right here wherever these touched this line you draw straight across And then you have an even grid and that could go for outside or inside all the way back now if you're doing a room you just from these points just go straight up straight up and each one of them will get closer to one another as well all, all the way down and then again you have your point here you go from this point out, part of your starburst. And you can do another one. Of course, as I say again, your inches. That one, that one. And that's perfect grid for doing whatever, something on a wall, a picture, a, um, a panel, computer panel, a flat screen TV, windows whatever and it'll be in perspective da, 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 da. where's the next one I want everyone over then you can have a door let's say in the middle of this going here since I didn't want to put it directly under the window you know, we're separating poles in the middle so that's perfect for that now to measure let's say if you wanted to measure where the center if you did this and you wanted to measure where the center of that is or any square actually you just do your square one X and an X and there's your center point you can even do something like this like if there's a wall and it's running down to the other end of your building there's your roof there's your floor if you wanted to find the center of this like you have to put a um, communication device in the center of that same thing take from that point to that point and then there's your center. This would be your center, wherever that X crosses it one another. So if you wanted to keep breaking this down, and this is off, make your X like that in it, or your plus symbol, not your X. Then you break it down. So now that's the center of each square. So if you want to find out all the way across, this is your center. Now do, do your, uh, plus symbol again and then you can break it down even further and let me use a different color so now you have this you can break it down even further again center center line and right here again you can do another plus to find the center and so forth and so on until you can't draw on it anymore so with blue Let's say this, this, here's my center. Draw my plus symbol and it's off already. Uh, red, here's this, draw this. Here's my plus symbol, here's my center. Draw that, my X again, and then black. Here's my square, here's my center. Draw the X again, or the plus symbol again. And as I say, so forth and so on. So if you want to have to divide this room in half, go across here at this point, go up and then go there. So you can actually wall this off. So this is half of the room and you still want some of the room to show, you can have a big door 
here and then black in the rest of this but you'll still see that floor here when the color is that green you'll still see this floor and this wall and this part that's coming back here so that's how you find the center of a square and yeah I'll go leave a, I, I did a, a video on measuring in perspective and I'll leave a link at the end of this uh, video so that for more detail you can go in and check this out because I'm sure this video is over 30 minutes now so but there's still a little bit more to come so when I finish this video you should be ready to go out and do a better background than before all right moving on Okay, so let me draw a couple backgrounds and then maybe we can put all this in perspective. And I'll draw this, um, I'll speed this up so it won't waste your time. And then afterwards, we can kind of like analyze it and you, hopefully you'll see what I was getting at. Because a couple of those, those getting thrown off. So anyway, we'll speed this up now and I'll draw some backgrounds and we'll get back with you in a second. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's analyze these quick, rough uh, background drawings. This first one I did of a basically a city uh, street and your know, apartment buildings, hotel, whatever. And uh, I use the grid, not the grid, I use more perspective lines on this one because I'm doing a lot of squares. So uh, you can tell that they're off because this was a rough sketch, but because anytime you do like a lot of windows and so forth, um, anytime you do a lot of squares or rectangles, you're gonna have to use those guidelines and basically stay on those guidelines. And this building here, got I got into a little two point perspective, so that line would be back here somewhere on the horizon line, which is about somewhere down in here. But as you see, I, I put it here, but then I was too close to do these buildings, so I had to extend it somewhere about here, I guess. So as I said, um, I, this is a two point, it's going in two point perspective, it's going down somewhere here, but I didn't want to get into the perspective thing. It's basically viewing the background and you have to see it in your head and then start drawing it. Start drawing the squares first. Don't try to do detail on the cars or the whatever. And then just fill it in. You know, like as I said, you have your sidewalk, your your lamp post. Uh, put some shrubs here, some trees here. Um, yeah. So that that's that's it with that one. I didn't do the guidelines coming across because I just basically concentrated on these buildings and these cars going by. So yeah, have your have your image in your head first. Now this next one was. Basically, I saw the horizon. This was my horizon line right here. This is the eye level because you're above this. You're above this little piece of, of beach or dirt. And this is basically, you just say like a rock world with a lot of rock outcroppings and the ocean or whatever. And, you know, in my head, I was saying these guys here are landed on the planet and they took their little rover machine and they went and this is basically as far as they could go because they ran into the ocean. So now they're gonna have to figure out how to cross the ocean. And it's good to have an, an idea of a, a story in your head that helps you to put more elements into it. As I mentioned uh, earlier about being in a, a laboratory, you know, what type of laboratory it is. If they're creating um, uh, clones, then they would have the little clone uh, tube. I don't know if I can even find that real quick. 
but you would have to say to yourself in your mind, okay, so what would be in a clone processing laboratory? And then you just kind of make stuff up. A lot of desks, a lot of chairs, um, computers, as I say, the clone. There's little tubes. I could have put a row of tubes here with different clone, different uh, people in them or different bodies in them, you know, the whole, whole nine yards. So, yeah, you just have to keep in mind what you want to have when you do that. And as I said, this is the horizon line, and I could have put the grid lines here, but I didn't have to because um, I'm not dealing with a lot of squares or rectangles. I just knew that I had a little outcropping here, outcropping there, outcropping there, and then just do that. So if you're not really working with a lot of squares and so forth, you really don't have to worry about a lot of placements. It's good to have it every time you do it, but it's good to, you don't have to worry about it because there's a lot of not, not a lot of squares. Now, if I brought this down a little bit and focus closer, I'd have to know where these islands are in perspective to one another. But if this was just an establishing shot and you're not going to show it again, you know, so be it. So I had the vehicle going this way, but there's really no, no um, perspective on this. It's basically just straight. So if any perspective, it would be going that way, hitting the line over here. So in the last one, I just did a, uh, what did I do? Anyway, these guys are going in this direction. So the horizon line would be here. And the only thing I could probably change is these little, um, what do you call these things? Where you view, they, basically they came out to view the fleet flying by. These little, um, ah, it was in my mouth a second ago. Uh, not obstacle observation center so they they all they live in the, the mountains they built all their homes inside of the, the mountains because it's basically just mostly mountains and these are clouds they're way above the clouds and they came out on the observation decks to see the fleet flying by if anything they're going in this direction so i would say my perspective my my vanishing point would be over here somewhere and my um, horizon line would be across here, so I could, I would have, might have brought that down, that angle down a little bit. But other than that, yes, as I say, you have the, you have your image in your head, and this is more rock, and I had just like a tree, piece of a branch growing out of the rock, and it's supposed to be so high up you can't see anything, which is why there's just clouds. So these guys live high in the mountains, and these are just hills, more hills and planets, just to some stars, just to to fill in that background. And yeah, that was the last one. So yeah, as I say, just have the image in your head, have your grid, if you need a grid, especially if you're doing a lot of flat, your grid somewhere. So like this, just your starburst grid. And mainly for buildings and a lot of objects, but this is so open, I wouldn't have needed that grid. But it's always good to have. And then you start putting your things in there.